Welcome to the Pacific 62 blogs. For those of you that know me well, you'll be wondering what's going wrong with me sitting in front of a video camera. It's not my favorite place to be, but the topics are getting bigger. The information's getting more intricate and I'm running out of time. So this seems like the, the easiest way to move forward and hopefully gives everyone a little bit more information. Today's topic is stabilization. It's something that's spoken about a lot across all the different types of boats and um, it's something that we've considered a lot through the development of our Pacific 62. First things that I probably want to make clear, stabilization is about comfort and it's not to be confused with stability and safety. So they're two very separate topics and stability and safety is not what we're discussing today. The comfort side of things are. If we start off with Probably what I consider the two main types of hulls or the two extremes that you go to will refer to it as stiff and soft. A stiff boat comes back to level quite quick with, with a small amount of inclination, whereas a soft vessel will slowly stop its roll and then slowly come back to level. Probably the obvious two vessels in that school of thought is the stiff vessels, your typical planing trailer boat. Planing hull, you know, flattish bottom, hard chines, and a little bit of lean. You get quite a good riding moment to come back to level very quickly. And there's not a lot of inertia that stopping, so it comes back quite quickly. But whereas the super yacht style boat, high superstructure, round bilge, so it's a lot softer where it stops and then comes back up to level. So there are your two predominant feelings in my mind in a boat, and there's no number that's absolutely correct, and there's a lot of other influencing factors that make it feel bad. If you had a very high, stiff boat and you were a long way from the center of roll, obviously the amount that your body is moving and the speed at which it's accelerating and decelerating changes significantly to if you are standing slightly below the center of roll and your body is really just twisting about that center point. The Two very different feelings and that lower scenario in the trailer boats is a much nicer feeling as you get lower. As you get higher, being slightly softer is probably a nicer feeling. As a company, we design all of our boats to be a very low center of gravity. We try and keep all of our accommodation heights and everything as low as we possibly can for that reason. It's, it's, it's comfort and it's also stability. We like a stiff boat and because we predominantly build Planing boats, most of our boats are stiff by nature. And, and so that's, that tends to be what we do. Now, what's comfortable for me may not be comfortable for someone else. There's, there's a, a mid zone that's fairly generic that most people find comfortable, but at the extreme, some people find a stiff boat more comfortable. Some people find a, a soft boat more comfortable. The Pacific 62 by design is a stiff hull. It has a low center of gravity. It's hard chined. It develops that writing moment very quickly as it leans over. And we purposely wanted to have it that way. I've been in situations where we've lost stabilization at sea and it's always night. It's always rough. It's always the wrong times for things to go wrong at sea. And having a hull that has a strong riding moment makes me feel safe. I've been in the round bilge, soft boat, big seas, dynamic stabilizers stopped. And the first roll, a bed next to my bed came off it, holdings on the floor and rolled over on top of my bed. I wasn't in it luckily. And then we got our head to wind and we were fine. Doesn't make that boat unsafe either. Just remember, this isn't stability, this is comfort. I'd prefer to have the boat have that inherent comfort level of stabilization. Now, the roll period of a vessel has a bit to do with this as well. So if we go back to our trailer boat, it's got a very quick motion. And let's say a boat wake came past, a big boat wake. That's probably one of the more uncomfortable kind of waves in a small trailer boat. And that the roll period of that vessel will probably be quite close to the wave period of the boat wake and it gets aggressive and it's not comfortable and, and doesn't feel good at all. Whereas the super yacht I was discussing earlier with the slower roll, we would be in a one meter 
12 second period swell or 10 second period swell somewhere around there and that was what was really uncomfortable you seem to be moving a lot more than you should be for the size of the waves now the boat wake and the super yacht not going to make a difference probably a lot to do with the mass of the vessel but the short period waves one meter swell of 10 seconds and the trailer boat feels beautiful you're just following the waves and it's, it's lovely we've gone stiff which means in that chop in a swell in a large ocean swell the boat's going to feel fantastic there will be times when we're in a seaway that will be uncomfortable because it'll match the roll period of the boat when we looked at stabilization there's quite a few different types these days uh but i probably are going to stick to a couple of the main ones so first of all uh dynamic stabilization with fins this is probably the system i've had the most to do with in the past it's a very good system, works really well. You can get zero speed, so when the boat's not moving, you can have the fins um, giving you stability. But there's a lot of things moving under the water. You've got penetrations through your hull. And in a hard chain boat like we've designed, it's quite tricky to get your stabilizers in the right position to get the maximum effect and minimal drag, if you like, underway without them sticking out the side of the boat and hitting docks when you're in there, which you can't have. Designing them is not so easy in, in that style of boat. The other one is the zero speed is a lot of water moving under the boat. And if you're swimming around the boat and stuff like that, you wouldn't feel comfortable around fins moving. The next one is uh, paravanes or flopper stoppers that can be referred to. And... These are fantastic. I uh, really like these because they're simple. They're so simple. And they work. The downside is they are not convenient at all. You generally want to have some form of stays out the side of the boat to deploy them so they've got the maximum leverage. Once again, the more leverage, the less drag that you're going to have because the more effect they're going to have for a smaller paravane. And generally, you won't run a paravane at anchor. You'll actually change it to a different system at anchor. And that can be a bit of a pain as well. Yeah, but a really good system. Um, one I, I definitely would have entertained. But the convenience factor and is just, it's not quite there. The last one that we looked at seriously was the gyro stabilizers. They are becoming more and more used in all types of vessels they are very good in that they mount inside the boat there's no appendages outside the boat so with the fins if you roll over to port your fins will react and they will stay delivering a writing moment until you come up level and they flatten out again with a gyro that won't happen so you've got a limited amount of pull to come back right and then it loses effect if you like. They're not quite as good underway. At rest, they are as good, if not better. And that's where we think we'll be probably using them at rest and, and anchorages and, and, and whatnot if you can't get a good anchorage. Or if you're out fishing, doing deep drops and stuff, it, it does take a lot of fatigue out of the day, not, not moving around quite so much. So that's the reason that we went to gyro sta stabilization. The other benefit I guess we get from having the the particular type of gyro that we've taken is we found a lot on the fishing boats if you're reversing into the sea over deep drops that you get a lot of air going in under the boat. We did find you, you can get airlocks in those systems and there's lots of ways you can design around that but we've gone for the quick gyro. The main reason being is it's a, it spins a little bit slower so it doesn't need water cooling which means it's one less system that we need to have on the boat. And I'm a huge fan of one less system, so that's uh, it's where we've landed. Um, look, these are all my opinion and how we work things. And I really enjoy talking to people about their experiences and what they find and love a discussion. So anytime anyone wants to have a chat about these things, please feel free to give me a call. All right. Cheers.